Finance Minister Matia Kasaija appeared before the Education Committee of Parliament alongside the Permanent Secretary and Secretary to the Treasury, Ramadan Gobi, and other senior staff of the Ministry of Finance. The committee members accused the Ministry of Finance of frustrating the critical activities of the Ministry of Education by slashing its budgetary allocations. But the Honorable Kasaija attributed the cuts to lack of funds to cater for all the needs of all sectors at the same time. He then warned of tough times ahead until the economy fully recovers from the impacts of COVID-19 pandemic. Because some people are saying, and this has made some of us very unpopular, this Kasaija is Mkonogamu, he doesn't want to give us money, he's frustrating us. That, I can't do that. No, I can't do that. It is simply because the means are limited. Kasaija says the onus is on all stakeholders, including the members of parliament, to work collectively to raise the tax base through diversification and innovation. According to Uganda Revenue Authority, Uganda has just about 2 million registered direct taxpayers out of a population of 45 million. Really, the salvation is in really making sure, first of all, the economy must move very fast, must build it, it should go back at that speed which I showed you. <laughs> economy expanding, but even when it is expanding, we must look for ways and means of generating local revenue. But the legislators faulted Minister Kasaija and his team of unnecessary expenditure, leaving important sectors like education unattended to. You cannot be here, Honorable Minister, and you send half a teacher in a school, and you think you're here repurposing. But why don't we invest in our schools, invest in our hospitals, so that we have hospitals that every Ugandan can walk to, we have the schools that all our children can go to. Running a school on allocation of 2,500 shillings per pupil for a term is not realistic as per current inflation. Think about it. We all went to school. What are we looking at? Ramadan Gobi, the permanent secretary and secretary to the treasury in the finance ministry, told MPs that parliament should now concentrate on planning and distributing resources to programs rather than sectors to avoid increased budget cuts. My, my view is, look at how do we make this national budget speak to our priorities. Because this is what we are trying to do when we talked of repurposing. Gobi explained that the tough economic times means that focus should be on programs and not sectors. The finance ministry has presented to parliament a total budget estimated of 50.1 trillion shillings for the financial year 2023-2024, reducing the discretionary expenditure by 900 billion shillings compared to the current financial year. The money that we spent in the past years, we didn't have it. Reality now is we must pay back that money, and we don't have it. So what we are discussing here are the ramifications of the same approach that we have used in the past to budget. The Higher Education Student Loan Scheme, research among others, have not been prioritized in the forthcoming financial year. Ramson Muhire, Church of Uganda Family TV News at 8.